at night, you'll see something move past you. And it freaks me out all the time. Ever since I moved in, there's been some sort of presence around the house. You're not alone. It's not connected to anything. So how does it ring by itself? Do you know of any murders around here? <gasps> oh my gosh. I see her being dragged by her feet. Are you serious? He gives you a warning to protect who you surround yourself with. She wants her story heard. She wants you to help her. I need to figure out what's in this house. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunting in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of Jonathan Bennett. So I've been living in this house for about three and a half, four months. And ever since I moved in, there's been some sort of presence around the house at all times. I definitely am starting to get freaked out by it. Like when I first moved here, I thought it was just my imagination. But the longer and longer that I live here, the more and more it's becoming an issue. I'm in LA, California. I'm headed out to see Jonathan Bennett. He was best known for his role in the movie Mean Girls. And he recently just appeared on Dancing with the Stars. He just recently bought a house in LA. And he thinks that the house might be haunted. I think he may be frightened. And if that's the case, any type of uh, spirit activity that's there, they can feed off of his scared energy. I think the difference between today and some other investigations that I've done is this is a home he's actually living in. There seems to be a sense of urgency with this. My mom passed away about a year ago, and I realized I needed to be a big boy and step up and buy a place and have a home in LA. When I first moved to LA, I moved to this certain street, and my mom, when she would come to visit, absolutely loved it. It's a very like welcoming street. You feel at home here. And for the next 10 years, as I moved around LA, she would always say, John, you gotta go back to that first street. That was the good one, that's the good one. I had been looking for houses all over the city, literally every different area, and none of them felt right. Then my dad got really sick, and I had to go home and take care of him. And when that happened, this house that I moved into came up for sale a block away from where I originally lived in Los Angeles. My friends drove by by chance and saw it and called me immediately and they were like, we found the house you're gonna want. And when they told me the name of the street, I was like, of course that's where it is. It was just one of those moments where you're like, thanks mom. 
And so I actually bought it sight unseen. I moved in with two of my best friends, and now we feel like we have a fourth roommate living with us. Everything is just a little weird. There's a lot of electrical issues. A lot of electronics are doing crazy stuff. And I see a lot of things out of the corner of my eye. All the time. The other thing that happens is there's an intercom system that goes from the front gate to the kitchen. The doorbell for the gate started ringing. But here's the kicker. We got rid of the gate and the button about three months ago. So there's no possible way to ring the doorbell. It doesn't exist. And all the time, the doorbell's ringing, and the camera automatically comes on, and it's like black and white fuzz. One of the weirdest things that happens, you'll be standing there doing something, and you definitely see something move by you. And it freaks me out all the time, especially when I'm home alone and have to walk upstairs and like walk down the longest, scariest hallway ever known to man to go to sleep. You just feel like something's walking next to you. It creeps me out a lot. And sometimes I sleep with my lights on. And by sometimes, I mean all the time. I'm a 33-year-old man that sleeps with the lights on, so I need to figure out what's in this house. Having just lost both my parents within the past year, there's a lot of stuff going on with me, just personally. I'll definitely say I feel very vulnerable inviting a medium here because people talk about how it does tend to stir up the spirits a lot, and they're already stirred up. I have no idea what today's going to be like. I don't know what I'm walking into. Anything can, could have happened in this house or near this house. I'm sensing a very strong presence of a woman, a young woman, maybe early 20s. That's the vibe I'm picking up on. It seems like one of those sad vibes. I don't feel she's a woman that was in control of her own life. I feel like she was at the mercy of others. I don't get a good feeling in this neighborhood or driving down these streets. I feel like something happened here. I can't even believe I'm going to say this, but I feel like a lot of murders took place here. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel that well, the reason there's a lot of bars on the window is that maybe it was a lot of crime here in this particular radius of, um, Houses. Maybe the neighborhood's better now. I'm also picking up on a very strong father figure for Jonathan. I keep seeing my symbols for pilot, like a pilot's hat or a pilot's wings. Must be close. 
Something about this block. Somebody who liked to kill people? Sounds a little dramatic, I know. That's what I'm picking up. Okay, here I am. Oh boy, it's a nice house. I still see something about that young lady. Hmm. Not feeling too good here. Nope. I have to say, I think Jonathan's right. I feel that there is some energy that's going on here. Whatever this is, I kind of sense the energy going all around the perimeter. This is a person that lived either on this block, in this house, or in this area. But my guess is it's, it's up uh, on this block somehow, because it, it seems to keep going up and down. Well, this is interesting. I feel really nervous. My heart is beating <laughs> out of my chest, like I can feel it beating. OK. Jonathan, Hi. how are you? Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet Jim you. Russo. Hi. How's it going? Good. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I was like, yeah, oh, this will be a great idea. And now that the, the moment's here, I'm like, is this a good idea? <laughs> but I think it'll be. Do you want to live with what you're living with? Mm, no. It's really weird. Really? More than anything. What is it about today that you're hoping to accomplish? Just find out what it is and why it's here. Is it something we can live with? You know, because I worked my butt off to get this house and to like, get where I am today tr to like do all this. So it's like uh, either you leave, I leave, or we need to learn how to coexist. Exactly, exactly. All right. I can definitely feel a presence. So I, I want to tell you that right up front. OK. I pick up a young woman, early 20s. Right. So far, that's so strong. OK. And I just want to tell you, from what I'm looking at, as I assess your energy, I read energy, you pick up on a lot. You have visits with the spirit world. They told me to tell you that. OK. I don't know anything about like the mediums or the connections, but a lot of people have said this to me. I'm very empathetic. Yes, I could feel it too. I could sense it. And the thing that'll happen to me, someone can walk into a room and like as soon as they talk, I instantly know something's wrong. The reason why you always pick up on when something's wrong with someone, never really when it's good. Right. Well, that's because you're you're a nurturer. You want you yes. want to help and you want to fix it. I kind of feel like somebody in your family was like that. It was mom, 100%. Yeah. She was the nurturer of everyone. And now, like, that she's passed away, it's like I feel her. Through you. Uh, yeah. I want to step in the house and get our day started. I have a lot of messages for you today. I feel really? like you're so wide open. You're like an open book. It's good, though. <laughs> I'm shaking. Are you ready to go in? I'm this ready. This is where all the weird are stuff you, happens. Are you ready for me to uncover the truth? I don't I'm shaking. Are you ready to go in? I'm this ready. This is where all the weird are stuff you, happens. Are you ready for me to uncover the truth? I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Come on in. All right. Here it is. Wow. This is nice. This Thank is you. pretty. Thank you. OK, so the second I walked through this door, Dad's also passed? Yeah. I believe I have your dad with me. Where's the aviation paraphernalia that you have? <laughs> what? Come on. <laughs> aviation paraphernalia. In my room? I don't know. Yeah. I think it's your dad. OK. He knows about this home and what you have in it. Yeah, the second I walked through the door, he started the, the, the airplane. And he wants to take me on this tour. And then he told me to just. He'll want to show you a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But he wanted to let you know it's him. You see? Wow, that's weird. Yeah, in here, in my office, my desk is a airplane wing. And that's my dad's favorite picture. It's of a fighter jet. So when I walked in, he told me about the planes, and I, <laughs> but I picked it up in the car. 
But he would, because he was, like, really into planes, so. That's what he was telling me. I kept seeing a pilot's hat as well. This is his. This is his headset. I'll take it as the same. But how yeah. else would he get me to say right. what, what I wear This on is my his head. headset that he uses when he flies. Oh, he's a, he's a he, pilot? He was a pilot, oh. yeah. Oh. So that's why he loves airplanes. And he was a doctor, but he was also a pilot. OK. Let, let's step out of here. He's so happy to see you, and he's so happy to talk to you. And he said something about, do you have like a an aunt that you call Kathy, but it's not your, really your aunt? There's a Kathy that took care of him that was his hospice nurse slash good friend. Because he said, thank you for taking care of her after the fact. Something where you gave her something, you set her up. You we got set her, her up. The job. I don't yeah, know what we helped her out. So he went like, like, like that, you know, that's what I would have done. That woman, of course, was, that woman yes. was good to me. That, <laughs> that's exactly what he says. What? That's exactly what he says. That woman is good to me. He's like, she takes care of me. Yeah. Make sure you take care of her. And so when he passed away, we kind of like just helped her out, get some things she needed. He knows. He knows. Who owns a hair salon? Ah! Oh, no. You just scared the crap out of me. He said the hair salon. I'm really? Not, he said he My sister out. owns a hair salon. Oh my God. Is that, that's his daughter then? Yeah, Lisa. Oh, gee, you just scared That's, some life. You scared that me. You just said <gasps> everything in my life in one second. What? It's your dad. He's a great communicator. Oh, yeah. So excited to be here. He's, he's very, didn't... he's very like full of life. He's, I, we, him and I have a lot of the same energy. Like we're very open and full of life. I, I'll tell you another thing. He wasn't married to your mom. They did get divorced. That's what he's saying. Because he told me to tell you that even though they were divorced, they're together on the other side. He told me to tell you that. He said, I know my son wants to know if we're together. And he said that your mother's a little bit of a nervous woman. Like, I don't know if she just didn't want to leave you. It's all about you. Like, you are her world. And he's, like, trying to calm her down about you on the other side. It's important. Yeah. She still worries. Just always. Like, the big thing with my mom was she worried all the time. And my dad was a lot of the opposite. Ruthann, he's going to be fine. We got it. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. So that's really weird you say that. Yeah. I think Dad will, will be joining us all day today. This is a good thing. This is really cool. Yeah. Wow. When I just walked in here beside your dad, there is this young energy. And I think it's someone that you knew in life. And he's coming up as someone who died of a drug overdose. There is this young energy, and I think it's someone that you knew in life. And he's coming up as someone who died of a drug overdose or his actions caused his own death. And he knows you and he knows maybe people that lived in this house with you. You know who it is? He's with me, he's with you. He hangs out in this house. The first thing he gives you is a little bit of a warning to protect who you surround yourself with. And he knows one of your friends, too, very closely. Somebody have, like, a tattoo on, like, like words, words that go along, maybe, like, the arm? Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, this friend who passed knows him, too. Are you aware of that? Like, you all know each other? Yeah. Can I be honest? Yeah. He said, dude, you got to be careful around that guy. <laughs> Does that make sense? 100%. And I feel like what he's telling me is you are, you struggle with the guilt if you have to stay away from certain friends. Right. That's what he said. He said, you're a good friend, but you can't be responsible for all your friends. He definitely had a uh protective feeling to me. Still does. Right. The friend who OD'd, I don't know if I'm going to pick up his name. Buddy. OK. So Jonathan, this is really going to be hard for me today, because I don't know which one of <laughs> I must have had an influence on some people when, before they passed, because I feel like they're all like, <laughs> We have a little work to do. We have a do. work to do. OK. All right. All right, so why don't we just walk in there and see, but you know, one step at a time. OK. This house is beautiful. Thank you. 
This is the, uh, the main hub where everyone hangs out. A lot of the problems that happen have to do with like this TV, the sound system, the speakers, all the electronics and the remote. A lot of it happens right here. Well, I kind of feel like this whole wall, even what's behind this wall, is where a lot of spirit activity hovers. And wherever the electric connects, I keep seeing that woman. She hangs out in this house a lot. I could swear she's an actress or a model. She was trying to get a job and like something's not right. And I keep getting an initial J with her, very strong J. I keep seeing her with her head down crying. You may not know her personally, but there's something in this house or someone in this house that I feel she's drawn to. Do you have a lot of down and out people that come here and they need like a place to stay? <laughs> yes, a lot. Like a safety almost like. Yeah, well this house is a very much like a safe haven for everyone. Cause I kind of feel that's who she is and yes. she was very needy and she's very, very, very young. Um, did you just get a chill? Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, that was weird. Getting a vision like I'm watching a movie and this is, she kind of goes in between here and the kitchen. She's trying to get your attention a lot of times. Tell you what she's telling me. She says she works off that energy of where this wall connects to electrically. I can see it. I, she doesn't even telling me. I see it. Okay. I see her kind of going back and forth and back and forth. Your friend's here, buddy. Yeah. He knows her too. He watches her every move from the spirit world. I feel like he wants her energy out of your space. So he's kind of like protects your energy. I can totally see that. You're not alone. No. You're never alone. Whoa. Your mom's here. Oh, wow. Aunt Judy? You have an Aunt Judy? Yeah. Your mom just brought her up. It's on your mom's side? That's her sister. She's... Don't say. She said she, so she went like this. That means we pray for her. Aunt Judy? That's her sister. She went like this. That means we pray for her. She have cancer? Still living? Mom said she's been given extra time. Doesn't mean she's going to pass. It means she's been spared. You need to call her and tell her mom came through and is watching over her. Like, you need to deliver that message. It's, it's imperative. I think when my mom passed away, a big thing was like, you know, make sure you check on Judy, like, all the time. And I, haven't, I, I don't call her as much as I should hardly ever and so that makes sense a lot that's so weird and mom also said she has your dog i think it's your dog <laughs> no way yeah it's like a big fluffy dog i'll sit you your dog is there maddie it's a golden doodle is it's it like a whitish white fluffy huge and fluffy it's like 150 pounds and she died like four years ago of a heart attack but when my mom got sick I sent Maddie to live with my mom because she was by herself and she was sick and she was lonely and they became like in love. And well, they were she just... said, this is my dog now. <laughs> she told you that all the She's time. All the time. So you're not getting this dog yeah, back. Oh yeah, no, you're not getting it back ever. They're together. Oh my God, they love each other. She says, I'm happy, you know, I'm, I'm in peace. She said she really tried to um, hang in there. But she said God had another plan for me. She's glad that whether or not you know it, you've accepted it. Doesn't make it easier, but you've accepted it. And she said that every piece of everything you put into this house, I feel like you thought of her. You know, like, wow, I know my mom would like this. It's like you were guided. I'd go to pick things out and it'd be like, 
No, my mom would think that's tacky. I can't do that. Right. Like all the time. It's like always about like, would she think it's tacky? Because my mom had such good taste. Yeah. So like her taste wore off on like what I picked out. She thinks she did a fabulous job. <laughs> she said she, you know, she is too hysterical. She's giving me advice about your decorating. <laughs> she would too. Okay. She told me there's something about a painting that you were holding off on hanging. And I don't, I don't know what this is, but she says, you can hang it just the way it is. It's the one with all the color. She wants you to brighten up the wall. The tulip painting. It's, a, it's her favorite painting. It's giant and massive. It is big. Yeah. Is it in your garage? Where is it? It's in storage. She says, get it out, and you don't have to do anything with it. Like, right. you don't need to fix it. <gasps> Oh my God, you, are you serious? Yes. There's a bug under it and I wasn't gonna hang it on the wall because there's a fly stuck between the glass and the mat of the painting. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, we have to like take it out of the frame and get it like cleaned and then put it up. No, you don't have to, she says don't. She said, hang it just the way it is. <laughs> Isn't that not amazing? So cool. Oh my gosh. So you're feeling all right? Mm -hmm. It's like so comforting. I love it. It's like to hear from your mom. Yeah, it's like, oh my God, they're there. Cause I always feel like I have them with me all the time. They are. Like always. So it's like, wow, they're really around. Okay. Now I have to tell you about this lady. Okay. We've identified everybody, but who, but who this is. So I want to just keep going and maybe okay. see what's maybe behind this wall that I kept picking up in the <sighs> kitchen. Is that the kitchen? Yeah. Let's right. do that. Let's try it. Where's the crazy electronic thing that gives you trouble in here? Here, it's this. It's a doorbell. Oh. So this was connected to the front yeah. gate. So someone would ring a doorbell out there to get let in, and this would pop on the screen. And then you'd see them and you'd say, okay, come in, and you push a button. That gate has been removed, so there's no doorbell. but. This just starts ringing on its own, and then the screen turns on, and it's not connected to anything. So how does it ring by itself? It's this woman. Maybe I'll ask you about your buddy. What the heck, who is she? I feel like she has the same name as your Aunt Judy. I keep hearing she's Judy. Your friend just said she has to leave. She died in a very untimely, tragic way. <sighs> she, I feel like she got murdered. Do you know? Of any murders that happened around your town here? Like, yeah. yeah. <gasps> oh my God. I feel like she got murdered. Do you know of any murders that happened around your town here? Yeah. You have. <gasps> oh my gosh. What? There's a girl that was murdered on this street and she was a young actress and the guy murdered her <gasps> and it was like down the street from where I live right now. And it was a young actress and she was murdered by some like serial killer guy. Oh my God. Yeah. I think this could be her. Hold on a minute. You see her being dragged by her feet. God, this poor lady. She's like a wayward spirit. There's something about you, Jonathan, or this home, or, or who's in this home that makes her feel like she's understood. She, nobody understood her. 
Do you like accept people unconditionally? Oh, absolutely. That's definitely like my thing. Like I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but there is this big blob of light behind you, and it's pulling me right into that room. What's in this room? This is the laundry room, but it also has the electrical for the entire house right here. Oh, so this is this is a like the central... hub. This is what controls all the lights, Jonathan, everything. This is where she's grabbing her energy to let you know that her presence is here. Mm -hmm. She definitely wants her story heard, but she feels that you would understand her. She wants you to help her. Okay. I mean, you're that guy. I just saw you so cute as a little boy about nine years old. I see you on the playground and I want to cry. Why are you all by yourself in the corner? Were you shy? I was not a big fan of recess. You always were like a little bit warm in your head. Mm -hmm. Old soul. Yeah, emotional too. Like sensitive, very sensitive. I think that that plays a part as to why she would somehow find you. Because they do gravitate towards the loving, mm -hmm. the compassionate, and the sensitive. Mm -hmm. I feel like in the long run, she could really um, affect your moods and make you right. more vulnerable. Yeah, that's one, one of the spooky things of the house is like randomly your emotions change in this house quickly. They'll be like, whoa, why am I so depressed? That's her. I could see that buddy would be like, she's cool, but she's got to go. I can't deal. So like he He's like, I can't deal with this. He doesn't want you to deal with it either. Right. Because he knows how sensitive you are. Right. And, and it affects you. Yeah. So he's really trying to evict her, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. She hangs out upstairs a lot, too. Have you had any activity upstairs? Yeah, in the hallway. Could I kind of go there and yes. see what I feel? Yes, please. OK. Please. So here's the hallway up here where a lot of spooky stuff happens. A lot of times, as you're walking, you'll notice things go vroom, vroom. At night, especially when you're walking, you'll see something move past you. An energy. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't see a figure. It's just a movement. It's energy. Vroom, like that. You see it out of the corner of your eye, and you're like, you look, and there's nothing there. Mm hmm yes. They come in and out of dimensions. Mm -hmm. that, that is that woman. I know it is. This woman, she can hear you talking. She's very in tune. She was murdered by... Wait a minute. You said a serial killer, right? Something, or like a boyfriend or a something. Let me see what I'm being told. OK, this man is not her boyfriend. She said this was another person that was kind of stalking her. She said this was another person that was kind of stalking her. Yes, there's a stalker. That's what it was. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes, she had a stalker. a stalker. She was like. Murdered by the stalker, yeah, like he lured and he her out. yeah, and he dragged her somewhere, uh, pulling her. It looks like a remote, yeah, deserted somewhere. area, deserted. Yeah. But he posed as like someone else at the door when he rang the bell. He posed as someone who was going to get her work or, or, or like a big producer or something. She has a liking to you. It's so strange because Buddy's trying to protect you from her energy because she's negative and sad, but yet she wants to protect you too from the people that smile in your face just like that man mm -hmm. and 
claimed to be one thing but was really another. Okay. You have a lot of people in your life that I feel want to befriend you and try to get things from you. Okay. Um, I think you're smarter than that, but there's a fine line between being non-judgmental and but, also guarding yourself and also protecting. You have to put boundaries in place. I want to really kind of get out of this hallway. It's okay. a little stuffy. Okay. Can we go somewhere else and really wrap this up outside. and talk about everything? Let's go outside. I'll show you the garden. <sighs> this is the backyard. This is gorgeous. Thank gorgeous. You. I love it out here. Thank you. Let's talk about the day. Okay, so who showed up? Right off the bat, we right had up. your dad, dad, your mom, mm -hmm. your friend, buddy. Yeah. You definitely feel that he's like around hanging out all the time. He said that he was at your Halloween party, too. <laughs> oh my gosh. We had a huge Halloween party. He told me you rolled up the rug. What rug did you roll up? You're crazy. Tell me. Yes, we had to take the rugs out of the house and have them cleaned after the party. Proving he was here. You have all these guardian angels and all this beautiful lit energy surrounding you. I want to say the only sad negative aspect is that woman that was really just like a wayward woman. Spirit. She's drawn to a lot of the love that's around this home and the acceptance. In the end, I don't think she was bad at all. I think she's misunderstood, mm -hmm. but she has to go to her final resting place on the other side. Now, do you find there is a connection between her and the front gate? As weird as this sounds, she guards your front house too. She doesn't let anybody in that's not supposed to come. You almost had a robbery. You had somebody looking at your house. I don't know if you know this. And she told me she deterred them. We've had two kids come into the backyard and kind of look like they were scoping out the place. And then about three weeks ago, it was late at night, and a guy in like a black like hood where you couldn't see his face walked up in between our cars in the driveway and turned around and ran out. Mm. Doesn't that validate what I just told you? That's insane. That's why she keeps ringing the doorbell. That's just my gut feeling. Like, she's ringing this doorbell because she's here protecting us. You're that's the one that she protects. Why I'm, that's why I'm wondering if I need to get a gate put up. I think she'll feel better if you did that. Right. So that when she, once she's out, she could still protect you, but it wouldn't be as forceful. Right. We just need to bring her to her safety zone. Your friend is already in the light. I keep saying to your buddy, well, Guide her over there. Yeah, and he take said, her. He said, I've been trying. I think it has to come from you. I feel like I want to tell her that, you know, we'll get the house locked down so she doesn't have to protect it anymore. Why don't you thank her for, like, watching over you? Yes. And then, but, like, tell her to go to the light. Yes. Judy, whoever you are, it's OK. You can go to the light now. Tell, tell Buddy to take her. Buddy, take her to the light, because she needs to go, because we're going to be fine and she's gonna be fine. I just felt like a little like weird I did too. vibe inside. Did, did you? I, I swear I did. It was like, I definitely felt lighter just now. I feel like I have a lot of garden angels. You do. That's cool. You really do. So I wanna thank you for having me come here. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for coming here and helping me figure out what was going on here and also inviting the party. You're telling me. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. It was wow. great. This is insane. I think the reason this experience happened at this point in my life is because I'm at a new chapter. And having this new chapter begin, I have to guard myself more than I normally have. And I think a lot of the reason she came was so that they could tell me to make sure I'm careful who I bring around me. I don't feel sad after tonight. I feel like my parents are around me every day and can prove that tonight. It was like a very warm, amazing feeling here. And even though it was spooky, it, it made me feel better. Looking back, Jonathan had no idea what was causing the paranormal activity in his new home. We discovered that Jonathan's friend, Buddy, who was protective of him in life, is still watching over him now. We also met Judy, a young murder victim who was trying to warn Jonathan against leaving himself emotionally exposed to strangers. 
Judy and Buddy were sending a clear message to Jonathan that he needs to be more aware of people who may want to take advantage of his kind and open nature. And while Jonathan has plenty of friends and family looking out for him from the other side, his warning was loud and clear. Do not allow others to mistake your kindness for weakness.